Okay, so our second program looks a hell of a lot more complex than our first program, but actually there's not a lot that's been introduced here that you haven't seen before. Our program starts again, a module goes to sub-main, it's still within the sub-main, so I'm only using one routine at the moment, and then we're suddenly hit by these strange things, dim. Now, dim was something that you know, kids used to get called in school, or you're a little bit dim. Um, so, surely, am I calling my program a little bit dim? Well, actually no, I'm not at all. What it's doing is dimensioning, giving an area of memory ready over over in your computer. Your computer has got memory and in your memory it can it can store things and what you're telling Visual Basic in this case to do is prepare some memory. Put a pointer called int number one in this case that points to that memory location and store anything, anything that's going to be stored in there is going to be an integer. Now if you remember your school maths you'll remember an integer is any whole number, positive or negative or zero. So you are going to store a value in this memory location where the pointer int number one points to. I've also got another variable called int number two and a third one called int sum. Now the nice thing about this, these modern versions of Visual Basic is you can chain these together. You never used to be able to, it didn't work, but you can now and these will, all three will be chained together as integers. I've got another one here called dec average. Dec average is a decimal. Notice how my variable names, these are called variables, they're called variables for a very good reason. They change. I can make them change from the beginning of the program to the end of the program. They can constantly change. And I've got a format here that I like to stick to. The first three letters define the data type, this integer, the type of data that's going to be stored in that area. So I've used dec for decimal, int for integer, string, str, str. So int number one int number two. I've used a capital letter for the next one because the word still sticks out. Notice how you can still see the word number in both those. Sum still sticks out. Average is still very clear even though there's actually three letters before it. That's my convention. You will come across others on the web and from other teachers and from other people. None of them are wrong. All of them have their own benefits. This is just mine. We've got our console, console right line. Oh no, we haven't. We've got right. Well, actually, it's the same, but subtly different. I'm using a right line down here. But what right line does is right line sends this command, this string, to the screen and then forces a carriage return and enter a new line. So it forces it down. I don't want that in this case. I want it to continue the next line to continue on. So console right simply puts this text up in the screen and then lets me put something straight after. Well, what am I putting straight after? Well, actually, what I'm putting straight after is a read line. So it will say, please enter your first number and there will be a flashing cursor waiting for me to put something in. And when I've finished it, unlike the previous, there's our old console which simply waited for me to push anything, including enter. As soon as I pressed enter, the program ends. In this case, I press enter and it doesn't just disappear. Whatever I put into this area will be stored in this variable. This is not equals like in maths. We use the word equals in programming, but actually it means assign to. So assign to int number one whatever has been entered through the keyboard. Store in num int number one whatever was entered in the keyboard. So if I put the number five in here, type number five in there, press enter, number five will be stored in the memory area that we defined as int number one as an integer. I'm doing exactly the same thing here for my second number. And I've got this funny one. This is just a little bit of maths, but remember this is not equals, this is assigned to. It's very similar to an equation. Take my int number one, let's say five, and add whatever is in number two, let's say three. So five add three gives me eight. And it says assign whatever the result of that is to the memory location int sum. So int sum will store the memory location at the memory location marked out by int sum would be stored the value eight. 
Here's another way of doing maths. Int sum divided by 2. So take int sum and then divide it by 2 and assign the result of that to deck average. So I've read in, I've asked, told the person what I want them to put in, I've read in what they've typed, I've asked them to put in the next number, I've read in what they've typed, I've worked out the sum of those two values, I've worked out the average of those two values, so I've done the input, now I've done the processing, where's the output? Well here it is, there's the right line, and look, the sum of and int number one and 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 int number two and it looks really confusing this is concatenation this is this joining together of lots of little parts imagine remember i said that have five in let's say i have five in the sum of five and three is eight so these values these variable names will be replaced by what is stored at those memory locations and this joined up this mixture of strings and variables will become a single string that is then sent to the screen same with this one the average of int number one and int number two is deck average the and is a join it joins these together it's like a bit like add but adding combines to this doesn't combine this joins them these two lines will appear on the screen and then we simply have our read line to stop the console window from disappearing see what it looks like there's our first line let me move that down you can see the program there it is it's done that it's done that it's got to here please enter your first number there it is please enter your first number okay let's put five in please enter your second number let's put three in now we're hoping that if we got this right in number one plus int number two should be eight and the average between these two should be the number halfway between them 5 plus 3 is 8, half of 8 is 4. Let's have a look. The sum of 5 and 3 is 8. Good, so our computer can do basic mathematics, and the average of 5 and 3 is 4. Excellent. Flashing line, there's our console read line. And press enter, console ends. Run it again. This time, because these are variables, I'll put something else in. Let's put 9, and then let's put 4. And now you can see why I've used a decimal, because of course I'm dealing with average on the last line and I can get a fractional response. So I've used decimal to capture that. I can't get that for the addition. If I add two whole numbers, I'll always get a whole number. But if I divide the sum of two whole numbers, I can easily get a fractional answer. But notice how this program simply takes in input, processes it, and then gives us the output. Very simple, very sweet little program. Looked complex, nothing complex about it at all. Okay, there we go.